Welcome everyone to my TEW 2020 series with AEW. This is the Fighter Fest buy-in and it kicks off with a strong start as Charles Betts is seen warming up in Gorilla. Taz interrupts him and Taz tells Betts he made a big mistake. Taz could have made Betts a huge star. He could have been the next TNT champion or better yet, AEW champion. Betts tells Taz it was a nice offer but the answer is still no. Look at how it's turned out for Sammy. No, he's got someone that's a winner. And he's right behind him. Taz turns around slowly. It's Kurt Angle. And Kurt goes on to say, of course, oh, it's true. It's damn true. Taz is livid. He storms off. He can't believe it. He turns and tells Betts he'll regret this. And Charles Betts just laughs as he goes on to greet the Olympic gold medalist that is Kurt Angle that won a gold medal with a broken damn neck or a broken freaking neck as we move on to the first match then of the buy-in in a decent pre-show match Charles Betts uh, does go on to defeat Matt Cardona the, uh, you'll notice that the internet title isn't on the line or the dark championship I'm going to try and move away from that so I have big plans coming up very soon with a new show and we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead with that. There will be some sort of an explanation very soon, so you're gonna have to stay tuned. After the match, Betts celebrates. Angle steps into the ring, raises Betts' arm in victory. Betts, the next best thing. Here we are then. AEW Fighter Fest begins with JR saying it's here and it's live in front of 20,000 fans at the Pepsi Center. It's AEW Fighter Fest alongside me, Excalibur and Tony Schiavone. Gentlemen, what a wild night it's going to be. It most certainly will be JR. Tonight's main event is an unsanctioned non-title match between the current AEW World Champion Kenny Omega and the Bastard Pack. If Pack loses, he says he'll never challenge Omega again as long as he is champion. And Omega wants to squash the annoying mosquito that is Pack. And how about the big tag team match between FTR and Santana and Ortiz to the winners will face the Young Bucks at All Out for the World Tag Team Championships. Plus, the AEW Women's Championship is on the line as Tessa defends against Baszler. And we'll be hearing from Cody Rhodes on the future of the TNT title after he was attacked Wednesday. Plus, Tony Khan makes a rare appearance, makes his first appearance, I should say, in this series. So a lot to get through, but first let's just have another quick rundown of the card. The main event, Kenny Omega, Pack unsanctioned match. The Women's Championship on the line, Tessa Blanchard defends for the first time against Shayna Baszler. And we'll also see John Moxley against Shinsuke Nakamura for the first time in AEW. Chris Jericho looks to get a bit of revenge on Ricky Starks after uh, he plowed that van into the side of the ambulance. And how about this? Well, it's been boiling over. Brian Cage versus Rowe. But up next, it's FTR of Pinnacle against Santana and Ortiz. Selena De La Renta heads out from the entrance tunnel with a mic in hand. She introduces Proud and Powerful. Santana and Ortiz, they come out looking ready, looking focused as ever. And FTR right next, Dax and Cash slowly climbing into the ring. So, who is going to all out? It's quite a way away yet, and we're still in June, about to head into July. Who is going to all out to face Matt and Nick Jackson for the World Tag Team Championships? Both, of course, have a bit of history with the Young Bucks in this save at various pay-per-views. And uh, in a good match, after 22 minutes 24, with a few distractions throughout, Wardlow distracting Santana, but the finish was Conan returning to AEW, distracting Cash Wheeler, allowing Santana to submit Cash Wheeler, which means proud and powerful, defeat FTR, and will face the Young Bucks for the World Tag Team Championships at All Out. Santana and Ortiz have done it. They've defeated FTR and have confirmed their spot All Out as they will finally face Matt and Nick for the Tag Team Championships. A rematch of last year's All Out. You, you can go back and uh, see how well that turned out. But this time, there is gold on the line. Selena stands in the middle of them and raises their arms high. Conan 
steps into the ring looking like a proud father. He hugs them both. What a moment. It's what they've been working towards. It's what they've been constantly focused on over the last couple of months. But it gets cut short as the young Bucks, Matt and Nick, stand at the top of the entranceway looking on. Then they hold their titles above their heads, making a statement that they are the champions. And they're going to have to do a hell of a lot more if they want to uh, be winning those titles. Renee is standing by backstage as she interviews the current women's champion Tessa Blanchard. Renee asks Tessa how she feels heading into tonight's match, her first title defence against Baszler, who looks dominant and who has a solid 6-0 record. And Tessa talks about why she signed with AEW. It was to compete against the very best this business has to offer. Just like Baszler, she quickly rose to the top. That's a lie. We know that she won that title through winning the casino ladder match for the casino chip. So playing the part of the heel there. And just like Baszler, she quickly rose to the top because she's simply the pinnacle of the women's division. She defeated the likes of veteran Mickey James and the longest reigning women's champion, Tony Storm, who, by the way, hasn't been seen since. Tonight is just another day at the office for Tessa. Tonight, not only will she beat Baszler, she'll retire her. Shayna Baszler steps in and confronts Tessa, looking at the title, then looks back at Tessa, saying she has nothing to lose. She's come this far. She might as well put her career on the line also. She doesn't care. She walks off in a bad mood. As we roll into our next match of the evening, some real bad blood has been building lately between Team Taz and War Machine, more specifically Brian Cage and Rowe, as it was Cage that drill clawed Sarah Rowe through, well, off the entrance ramp a couple of weeks ago. And here we are ending this little story between the two teams. And in a decent match, it is Brian Cage that defeats Rowe in 10 minutes. Well, Brian Cage celebrates his win over Rowe who has rolled out of the ring to join Hanson and his wife, Sarah, who did return on Dark. Jeff Cobb raises Cage's arms aloft as Taz grabs a mic. He tells War Machine, that's it, that's the end. Team Taz win. He tells War Machine to get to the back of the line to know their place on this roster. And Cage takes the mic also and finishes by saying, who better than Cage? War Machine retreat. And it's back to the drawing board for them, you can see. That mini storyline between Cage and Cobb and War Machine has ended with this segment. So we're going to be moving on. What is next for Brian Cage? He's got some incredible momentum at the moment. And so has Jeff Cobb. But where do we go now with War Machine? Well, I think they're just going to have to put in the work now within the ring if they want any chance of uh, climbing up those rankings. We head backstage as MJF walks into the Pinnacle's locker room to see Hangman Page sat drinking. MJF looks a bit irritated. Page goes to take a swig from his beer bottle, but MJF stops him and takes it off him. He tells Page to clean up his act. Whilst Pinnacle's FTR right there getting their asses beat, he's sat here drinking. Pinnacle, at this moment in time, only have one more shot at gold, and that's Page's casino chip for the world title. He wants him to cash it in. Page stands up grabbing his chip and tells MJF he'll make an announcement when he's ready. He walks off saying, if he's needed, he'll be in the bar. MJF looks pissed. So a bit of a desperation act here by MJF as the leader of the pinnacle, it seems. He wants gold and he wants it now. Up next, Kenny Omega is in the elite locker room with Doc and Carl Anderson discussing the main event tonight. Kenny talks about how he is on top of the pro wrestling world right now. No one can stop him. And it's in Tony Khan's best interest not to get in his or the elite's way. This is their company. With Callis, they also have the backing of Impact 2. He promises to finish off Pack tonight. But then there is a the small problem of Moxley and Kingston and their little uprising. Doc and Cole promise to be all over it. Dez and Wentz, who we saw on the uh, previous episode of Dynamite, walk into handshakes all around as Kenny turns to the cameraman and tells him, to get lost. So here we go. Kenny Omega confirming that with Callis in their corner, they have the back end of Impact Wrestling. Where is this going to go? You guys are just going to have to stay tuned. As up next, it's Chris Jericho 
against Ricky Starks and in a decent match after 11 minutes 26 couldn't run for too long um, simply because of uh, Starks' inexperience and stamina within the ring and also Jericho getting on a little bit too um, it is Jericho that does go over he beats Ricky Starks with the walls of Jericho when was the last time uh, we saw Jericho win with the uh, the walls of Jericho so that was uh, that's nice to see as we get just a 61 for this match the matches haven't been the best so far I mean we started strong with Santana and Ortiz um, but so far we're hovering around the 60s hopefully we can bring that back up very soon as Chris Jericho wins he goes over to his corner after the match to pick up Floyd his one true friend who will never let him down does he have some evil intentions in mind maybe thinking of using it on Ricky Starks but as he turns around he discovers that Starks has rolled out of the ring and joined Taz who is at ringside Jericho laughs and smirks pointing Floyd his baseball bat at a retreat in Starks and Taz is this the end between Team Taz and Jericho? I have to wait and see as the Bullet Club are backstage. AJ Styles stands in front of Jay White and Tama and Tanga, who look fired up after they were attacked by Nick and Matt last week on Dynamite. Styles talks about how the battle lines have been drawn. There is no going back now after the Elite made the mistake of firing the first shots. They wanted to do this peacefully, but they've been given no other option. He turns his attention to Don Callis. They call him a coward as he isn't here tonight. Instead, he's hidden himself in Nashville with impact. He's lucky they haven't decided to invade. Or maybe they will. That's given them an idea. Styles tells Callis that they spoke with Tony Khan earlier, the guy who really runs things around here, the guy who books the matches. And he says, next week on Dynamite, bring your impact boys, Des and Wentz, as we have a little match lined up for them. Bullet Club walk off. So there we go. Next episode of Dynamite is going to be a big one. It's going to be explosive. The Bullet Club making their in-ring debut here on AEW. As our next segment, it's a quick one. Wild Thing begins to play as John Moxley makes his entrance ahead of his match against Nakamura. He is not joined by Eddie Kingston though, as you'll see. Um, we get a 73 rating for. Uh, this segment with Moxley making his way out to the ring. And oh no. It's not looking good is it. I mean I know it says in a bout that I have fantastic heat and decent wrestling. Moxley does defeat Shinsuke Nakamura after 15 minutes. With a pinfall after a paradigm shift. But look at that. John Moxley and Nakamura just didn't click at all. And it showed in their performances. So that's really let us down. The match getting the crowd buzzing. But I'm really disappointed by that. I thought Mox and Nakamura would have really... Or at least give us something good. Summer in the 70s just wasn't to be. Well, after the match, Moxley's celebration gets cut short. As up on the Tron, we see Doc, Carl Anderson, Dez and Wentz surrounded. A hurt Eddie Kingston. He's on his knees. Doc takes a shot at Kingston. Carl then follows up with one of his own. Kingston is a bloody mess. Penta, El Zero, Miedo and Ray Phoenix fly in and start training fists with the four members of the Elite. John Moxley exits the ring and races to the back. So Omega looking to cut short this little uprising that Moxley and Kingston have promised. But somehow, don't think that's the end of it. In about that, how good heat and decent wrestling. After 12 minutes 21 in her first AEW women's title defence, it's Tessa Blanchard that defeats Shayna Baszler by submission as well. Rubbing salt into the wounds as we know Shayna Baszler with her 6-0 record. All of those matches have ended in that brutal armbar uh, that she's locked in on her opponents. So Tessa making defence number one of the title. We get 62 for this match which is really great to see. But after uh, Tessa exits the ring with her title grasped tightly to her chest. Shayna Baszler is on her knees though in the ring. She looks a bit downbeat, a bit sad. After what she promised earlier in the se this evening in that interview with Renee, her career seems to all be but over after losing the chance to become the women's champion. But find out what next for Baszler on Dynamite this coming Wednesday. Is it the end? We'll have to wait and see. Both Cody Rhodes and Tony Khan are stood next to one another. How about this? Tony Khan making his first appearance in the save. T Tony talks about this week's upcoming edition of Dynamite, which will see the in-ring debut of Bullet Club in AEW, and what it means to have them here to suppress the elite. 
Cody then goes on to talk about and announce that after the actions of both Lance and Mira last week, both men will face each other next Wednesday. And Cody is prepared to offer the winner a shot at his TNT title. Then Tony briefly mentions Don Callis. He may not be here tonight, but he knows he'll be watching. And whatever it is he's doing with the Elite, it won't last. Not for long. And then... Tony Khan also announces that a new show is coming to AEW on Monday nights and it will feature the likes of Marx, Omega, Page, Cassidy, Darby Allen, and the return of CM Punk. Cody is shocked at that. He looks at Tony who carries on hyping up Wednesday's Dynamite. It's not to be missed, more coming soon. Remember that big rivalry that Cody Rhodes had towards the end of last year and at the start of this year as well when uh, CM Punk formed the uh, culture shock. Well, Cody Rhodes doesn't seem too happy about that. Well, he's shocked at the moment. We'll have to wait and see where else this will run to as JR talks about next week's Dynamite. As he says, we are just a heartbeat away from tonight's main event between Kenny Omega and Pac. But let's take a quick look at next week's episode of Dynamite. As we heard, just Tony Khan has finally booked Bullet Club's debut inside of an AEW ring as they take on Impact Wrestling's Dez and Wentz. Also just announced Lance Archer will face Miro with the winner becoming the number one contender to Cody Rhodes' TNT Championship. Plus Hangman Adam Page, will he or won't he announce when he will cash in the casino chip after what MJF said tonight. Next week a huge eight man tag team match has been but the hardest will team up with SCU as they take on the private party and Scorpio Sky the bastard Pax music begins to play as he makes his entrance ahead of the main event unsanctioned non-title match if he loses he said he won't challenge Omega again which pretty much rules Pack out of a title shot for as long as Omega is champion so we're not going full Cody Rhodes here saying that he'll never challenge for the AEW title again but as long as Omega is champion he won't challenge if he loses next Omega comes out next with the gold around his waist these two men are gonna go to war and war they do go as uh, in an exceptional match in this hardcore match and with it being an unsanctioned match as well the rankings do not matter after half an hour, 30 minutes 13, it's Kenny Omega that defeats the bastard pack with a one winged angel. And I will uh, tell you how I thought this one would end in the next segment, but you can see Kenny Omega seemed off his game, although he's still got an in ring performance of 93. He is on such a roll at the moment, Kenny Omega. He's got that white hot momentum, which is always good to see. Uh, so here we go Kenny Omega wins both were a bloody mess tables, steel chairs, barbed wire various other objects were used throughout to inflict damage on one another it was a career threatening match as the end saw Kenny Omega hit a one winged angel on the bastard pack from a scaffolded platform near the entrance way from 25 feet up or more so similar to the bump that Sammy Guevara took in that stadium stampede match uh, last year in 2020 in real life. Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson rush out calling for EMTs. Medical attention is given to both Omega and Pac as Doc and Carl watch on concern. But Omega doesn't need it as much as Pac as he manages to stand to his feet and raise his arm aloft. He's then given his world title. Tamatonga and Tangaloa rush out. Doc and Cole grab Omega as they race away, ushering Kenny through the backstage area. The camera follows. They're heading towards the parking lot. On the way, they pass Dez and Wentz beating down Penta and Phoenix. Doc turns and sacrifices himself to Tamara and Tanga as Omega gets away with Carl Anderson. And he hangs out the window of the car with his AEW title held aloft. Firefest comes to an end with the shot of the AEW World Champions vehicle racing away with the noise of screeching tyres. Something has got to give here between the Elite and, of course, just AEW in total as we finish up with a 75 overall rating, which I'm not too fussed about because Fighter Fest, in real life, it's seen more of... Um, 
well, I mean, looking back on, on last year in real life, it, it was pretty much an episode of Dynamite, and they did it on two nights. It's just a glorified episode of Dynamite. So I'm not... I mean, I know we've done this on a Saturday as a pay-per-view in front of 20,000 people, but I'm not treating it as a double or nothing or an all-out or full, full gear. So that overall rating, it, it doesn't worry me too much. I'm happy with the women's match. That got a good rating, although we did get a 74 Tess's win over Tony Storm back at double or nothing, didn't we? Um, but everything heading in the right direction there. And this fight fest, anyway, was all built around that main event uh, between Omega and Pac. And it delivered with uh, an 80 rating. So that is it for Fighter Fest. Hope you've all enjoyed. And I'll see you all very soon for the next episode of AEW Dynamite. Don't miss it. Hey.